Hey everybody, my name's Micah. Grab your Bibles. Let's go through the Word. Picking up here in Luke chapter 9, starting in verse uh, 28. It says, about eight days after Jesus had said this, he took Peter, John, and James with him and went up onto a mountain to pray. As he was praying, the appearance of his face changed, and his clothes became as bright as a flash of lightning. Two men, Moses and Elijah, appeared in glorious splendor, talking with Jesus. They spoke about his departure, which he was about to bring to fulfillment at Jerusalem. Peter and his companions were very sleepy, but when they became fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men standing with him. As the men were leaving Jesus, Peter said to him, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. He did not know what he was saying. While he was speaking, a cloud appeared and enveloped them, and they were afraid as they entered the cloud. A voice came from the cloud saying, This is my son whom I have chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, they found that Jesus was alone. And the disciples kept this to themselves and told no one, at that time, what they had seen. So much happens in these few verses. So much that we could wrestle with and take to the ground. Uh, so many little nuggets of, of truth and glory and wisdom. Um, but ultimately, what I see in this moment is that when we come face to face with the glory of the living God, we're changed. We're not left the same. These three men, Peter, John, and James, saw Jesus. And not simply Jesus, the man that they had been traveling with, not even Jesus, this uh, worker of wonders, but they saw Jesus, the King of glory, standing in front of them in all of his majesty, served by the two men that were the pinnacle of everything it meant to be a Jew, and those men bowed at his feet, Moses and Elijah. They were there to serve and minister to Jesus, not the other way around. This should be something that impacts each and every one of us. When we come into contact with the living God, it should change us. And if you have submitted yourself to Jesus, you have come into contact with the living God. The spirit of the living God which indwells you, which allows you to see more fully the truth that God uh, imparts to us both through his word and through the communities of believers that we live in. We find ourselves face to face with the glory of who Jesus is, waiting to one day be glorified as these two saints that stood side by side with Jesus were also glorified. And the last beautiful thing that we see is this cloud uh, that uh, envelops them and speaks to them. This imagery uh, is not momentary and it's certainly not lost on us. When the cloud that is the presence of the living God enveloped anything in the Old Testament scriptures, it meant that the, the presence of humanity was not welcome in that place. Moses could not walk into the tabernacle when the presence of the living God filled it. When the presence of the living God as a cloud filled the temple, it chased the priest out. And yet in this moment, because they are led forth by the King of glory, by the true high priest, by Jesus himself, they are able to exist inside the cloud, to exist inside the presence of the living God and to hear his voice. 
The author of Hebrews tells us, or puts it to us this way, Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way opened up for us through the curtain that is his body, and since we have a great high priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. Let's go before the throne with confidence. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you that we can enter into your presence led by and because of the glory and the person of our King, Jesus. Would you continue to challenge us with the beauty and the glory of your word, with the reality that these men saw Jesus in his glory before death, and with the knowledge of the reality that one day we will be glorified. And we will see him face to face. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you have done. It's in your holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Thanks for joining us, guys. We'll catch you next time. Remember to like, subscribe, and click that bell.